Um, my max code for his rating is, I think, around 2,700. We took place 24 and uh, Asia West runner up in ICBC World. So it's my coach versus grab. 17 consecutive contests, 17 consecutive contests, I had at least one problem, hack or fail. So even some others, uh, they may not intentionally not included corner cases in pre-test to fail you after the contest and make some fun. I was doing competitive programming something like 16 hours per day. And that was the result, but I didn't give up. That pressure lead to more and more practice. So you know, the real warriors are the mind by not leaving the fight so it will get harder and harder but you should not leave because anything you do will lead to some result but it may be done so I would like to hear your questions and maybe uh, while answering questions, I may come with some more explanations on what you are interested about. Um, my max code for this rating is, I think, around 2,700. But now it's, I think, around 2,400. So you can start this asking questions. So do people need microphone or? So I wanted to ask, how did you meet your English voice? And what are your thoughts about uh, joining ICPC? For me, it was like I participated in our regionals three times. First participation led to very bad result of placing at 19 place, then silver medal, and then gold medal. So when I entered the university, I was the so I was the best competitive programming in terms of rating in my university when I just entered because I was doing that from uh, high school. Remember? So, but teams were formed at that time. So. I had no choice but to select just two random guys. Not that random, but yeah, not that strong. And I made my team of them. Actually, we won the competition in our university, but in regionals, two other teams from our university beat us. So yeah, in, in regionals, we were not that good. So it was my first experience. Next year, one of those random guys that was trying so much, he got better and better in computer programming and he got reached around candidate master. So he was good enough to be in my team but we replaced one of uh, our team members with someone else which was master or international master i don't remember and we won silver medal in regional and went to porto is that and again we changed that random guy with someone in that entered in the university that year and we even made our team better so you understand every year i changed someone in my team and we got better and better and better until we took place 24 and asia west run up in ICBC World Final. So for us, it's not like these many people interested in competitive programming. So in the whole university, like my university, you can find less than six, seven people who are interested in competitive programming. So your choices are limited. And then for sure you go for the one who is who has the maximum rating or who uh, you can work with him the best. And the second question. Second question was that I don't know about your country, but in India it is very much controversial that uh, either your person should do web development or yes. I understand. So it's very strange to me. So um, for us, it's a lot of different classes. So as I said, almost no one in my country follows competitive programming in university. They do something in high school and after that, they just give up in university. So, but what I think is even for like web developing, knowing to some extent and participating to some extent of CP is necessary because you need to become a problem solver, not a great problem solver like tourists, but to some extent that you can solve the obvious problems that happen. I also 
worked in a software company too for three years. And my experience was people who didn't try competitive programming are far behind people who work competitive programming, even just a bit. So I had a friend, he just, he was like you, he didn't know competitive programming at high school, he entered university. He started working competitive programming just like six months for one year. And you know, he learned a lot and that skill helped him to like upgrading from a company to another company in just two, three years to one of the greatest company in Iran, like top five that pay the most like that. So if he didn't do competitive programming, I believe that's never happened because they, they ask competitive programming questions in interview. And also it's like you can distinguish yourself with others. So that guy was so intelligent, but how company can understand that you are intelligent? So intelligence is inside you. So there is no, no number on your face showing your intelligence, right? He did great in that and he was great working in his companies one after one and he jumped directly after like two, three years to some great company. Hello Arpa, I'm Pranav, I'm a fresher and I'm starting out competitive programming. So I needed to share your story before asking my question. So I had a friend, so when he was, he started CP when he was in his freshman year and in his pre-final year, he had a drastic uh, drop in rating. He had a couple of contests gone bad in a row. So then he just gave it up. He couldn't cope up with it. And then he needed to take a break of six, seven months. Then he started again gradually. So what do you suggest when we have a fall like that? Or we have a bad time? Let me show you something. So it's my coach versus graph, right? Actually, competitions, they are unable to show your real skill. It's just a one-time exam that shows something, but they can't be that much different with your real ability. So like if someone is has code for this rating of more than 300, almost always, like more than 90% of time, he will win you in every clip. That is being safe. But the thing is, when you and someone else just have like 100 different, it's not that case. So it's really possible that something happened. Let me show you what happened in my rating graph, for example. I actually need more zoom because, you know, it's, it starts from here and goes to here. So, so uh, let me emphasize what happened to me here. First, understand that because my register time on code courses is like for 12 years ago, I think, the rating graph is super compressed. So like from something like here to here, it's like four, five months. It's exactly where my 11th grade started. So uh, when I started my 11th grade, which is the final grade you can participate in national Olympiads in Iran, you can see that I consistently drop in rating and it's so much. So you understand here is around 1500 and here is like 1400. Very much difference. And also, let me tell you that at that time, candidate master started from here. So I was candidate master and in first division. So I participated in first division contest. So I was going to school and every day a lot of pressure comes from other students that you are the new one losing rating every day. And let me say in 17 consecutive contests, 17 consecutive contests, I had at least one problem, hack or fail. So um, these days, nowadays, it's like three tests on code forces are strong enough that if you get accepted, you will get accepted after the contest too almost always 99% but that time for fun it was just like pretest very weak so you would get accepted but after contest fail so even some others uh, they may not intentionally not included corner cases in pretest to fail you after the contest and make some fun 17 contests I had this pressure that after contest fail 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 hang or something like that so in this amount of time in, in this period I was doing competitive programming something like 16 hours per Day. So um, I still have the timesheets. So I was a high school student. I don't know if you had some of these timesheets in your high school or not, but there are some timesheets that you uh, you write like math, blah, blah, hour like that. So I still have that timesheet that for us, it was how many hours you practice computerics, graphs, algorithms, and uh, the sum of amount of study I did on um, off days, for sure I can't do that when, when I go to school, it's impossible. But on off days, it was always more than 16 hours per day. And that was the result, but I didn't give up. That pressure lead to more and more practice. So it was like, I, I participated in something like 100 virtual contests in like three, four months. So like I started some, if you go back into my submissions and consider the time zone difference between Iran and 
India, you will find that I started some virtual contests at 4 a.m. So I was really trying hard and I'm not sure if this feature is still on Code Forces, but there is a feature that you can go to problem set and then submissions and check friends only and it will show you your friend submission. So other guys, they when they get up from bed, they saw that Arpa already participated in a virtual contest and solved another two problems too. Their rating was a pressure on me, but it was an attack back on them with my real uh, mind-blowing practice and hard work. See, here I try to go a bit above, very significant loss. Here you can see it's about, again, back to specialists. And just in two, three weeks, I went to there. So your practice will result, but it takes time. And you know, it's like the strong people are who don't leave the fight when it gets harder and harder. So you know, the real warriors are determined by not leaving the fight. So it will get harder and harder, but you should not leave because anything you do will lead to some result, but it may be delayed. You need to wait until that delay happens and you will get the result. So it's something like that. Next, please. Hello. So we are um, like basically we almost uh, we all are first year students and we're trying to build a culture for like all of us to participate in CP and have interest in CP. So how can we build that? You mean you want to build that culture? Something yeah. like that? What I see here is university and professors and all are so supportive for you. So that is the first good point. I see some universities that they have people interested, but no one supports them and but they can't do that. But I already saw some examples that some single university professor started to make some culture in CP culture and he was successful. Like I remember I was was uh, doing a presentation. It was a branch of a Canadian university in Qatar. So there was a single university professor that was supporting CP. And what she was doing was just like running some weekly competitions named Pizza and Program. So he asked his students, teams of three, to buy some pizza and come to the I don't know where you call it. So the, there is a place with a lot of computers that you can compass. So, yeah, hello. Oh, yeah. okay. So uh, she asked them to come to lab and just participate in a virtual code for this campus with each other. So the competition and fun there help students to get used to this program. Every week they came for pizza and program. I, I think he made a real revolution in that university without any CV culture and turned it to a university that has at least like 20 people participating in a CP. So what you need is to first is to make a regular program like what I said pizza and programming. Maybe a university can do that or just like some friends can start that and others will join automatically. So they see that it's fun and also it's beneficial, so they will join automatically. But the thing is, human nature is like, if you're alone, you can continue very hardly. So it becomes harder and harder and you lose motivation when you are trying on your own. But when our other people are joined, you see a lot of fun and you see they are growing and the gamification comes and all, and it will make a lot of motivation for you. There is a bias, so who sits in the back are not asking questions and all questions are from here. So can you select people somehow? Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and ring that bell. By the way, YouTube thinks the video down here is just perfect for you. Give it a watch and let me know in the comments.